you tell me about how you individually believe you contributed to history? Yeah, by history too. You could define a biosphere as being a life support system that is essentially materially closed, energetically open, sunlight, uh, power sources, and informationally open. That's true of our global biosphere, and it was true of Biosphere 2, the first man-made biosphere. We're at Sinugia Ranch, 20 miles outside of Santa Fe. This was the first project of the Institute of Ecotechnics. Institute of Ecotechnics started here at the ranch in 1970. And it came out of all the work that we were already doing. We were very interested in ecology. It's a synergy of what we call ecotechnics, the ecology of techniques and techniques of ecology, which is also now an, insti an international institute. The Theater of All Possibilities, which integrates Eastern, Tribal, and Western avant-garde theater. And uh, the enterprise for developing potentiality, to develop the capacity to have more and more choices about which particular manifestation the given individual or creative group wants to make. Before we set up Biosphere 2, we set up a number of other projects, kind of over the period of 12 years or so. Our second project was the Heraclitus, the research vessel Heraclitus, which itself is kind of a nice synergy of old and new technology. We have sailed basically the world's oceans up the Amazon for two years. It's actually voyaged further than a trip to the moon. The series of ecotechnic projects, which also include tropical rainforest in Puerto Rico and tropical savanna in West Australia gave us kind of a working model of elements that would be used inside Biosphere 2. There were three main goals for Biosphere 2. The first was to deepen our understanding of how Biosphere 1 operated. That's the Biosphere we all live in. It's from Biosphere 1 that we learned how to build Biosphere 2. It's Biosphere 1 which is the source of all the wisdom. We, humans, understand enough ecological science to model uh, the biosphere that we live in. Could we actually uh, model and create a uh, self-sustaining system? The second goal was to develop the technologies that would enable us to do long-term space travel and establish habitation on other planets. If we are going to settle in space, we have to have some kind of a system whereby life can recycle, where it can grow sufficient agriculture and provide the kind of vibrations or background that humanity has become accustomed to. Biosphere 2 really depended on both world-class ecologists and engineers who are willing to attempt the impossible. To make Biosphere 2 airtight, I invented and designed expansion chambers that we called lungs. Because they could expand and contract, they neutralized the pressure difference between the inside and the outside. I also designed a system for detecting leaks in the stainless steel liner. Because Biosphere 2 was actually airtight, we were able to get real data about the balance between photosynthesis and respiration. The third goal of Biosphere 2 was public education of what a biosphere is, that we as humans live inside of a biosphere. Vladimir Vernatsky, a great Russian thinker who kind of pioneered our modern understanding of the biosphere, developed the word biogeochemistry because a lot of what people had thought were just natural mineral deposits was the action of life. He also saw very clearly that we've become a major geologic force. That's why people are now using the word Anthropocene. So when we conceived of Biosphere 2, of course, we were thinking of space life support. The challenge is, could we make something that would actually survive and support all this life 
if we included people, farms, and technology. People said you can't do something on this big scale. You have to start with a little chamber this big with just algae, and then go to this big, and then this big. You can't do something that ambitious, that huge. But as it was being built, as it was clear that it could be built, it, I think it was thrilling for everyone. It was awesome. <laughs> it was really awesome. That little airlock closes, and you can see, you can look around, it's, it's like basically like a big living room packed with plants and soil and a small constructed wetland to, you know, treat the sewage. We're utilizing the power of plants and microbes to clean up the wastewaters that we have. This is one of the technologies that we think has a tremendous potential and improving environmental conditions on planet Earth. It became really clear, these plants are my third lung. These guys are the agents that are giving me oxygen. There were three tropical land biomes. There was a rainforest, a savanna, and a, a desert. And there were two aquatic ones. There was a fresh and saltwater marsh and an ocean with coral reef. On the human side of the wing was the human habitat, we like to think of it as kind of a micro city with eight people only. And we also had a farm. Our challenge was to feed eight people a complete diet on only a half acre of land. As soon as one crop was harvested, another one went in. And we learned also how to adapt our crops to the different shade, soil conditions, water needs. Because it was an actually sealed airtight system, we were able to experiment with the dynamics of whole ecosystems inside, isolated from the planet Earth. We started a visitor program because after a few of the world's uh, media outlets, you know, ran stories on Biosphere 2, first a stream of dozens and hundreds and thousands of people a day. The school kids all around the world wrote us letters, I mean, really, all around the world. We set up a whole program so that we could teach them what was going on. We were single-handedly going to save the world, and then we were a sham, and it was fake science, and it kind of went back and forth and up and down. The media first built us up, and then they tore us down. Well, the managing partners and the investing partner had a disagreement. And so eventually we parted ways and the investor took the biosphere into a different direction. We had a power struggle on the outside. We probably would have split into groups. That's all normal. But I think the extraordinary thing is that we were very mindful of the group dynamics and we never let it go sort of under the table. It was unthinkable for any of the eight of us to do anything to harm the biosphere. It was totally clear, this is our lifeboat. People thought Biosphere 2 was a showpiece to show how people could be put in a closed ecological system just exactly like planet Earth. That wasn't what it was at all. It was a research experiment to investigate what happens in a closed system. An experiment is fruitful if you learn from it. So this derision that we weren't perfectly sealed and it was somehow a failure because we had to pump in oxygen and we didn't quite grow all, all of our food misses the point. People will often say, oh, the oxygen disappeared and all these kinds of things. But when that happened, we learned that normally if you're climbing a mountain and the oxygen is getting lower, your blood cells start to build and the Biospherians' blood cells did not start to build. It's the pressure of climbing the mountain that causes that phenomenon. I don't think people in general realize or understand what a success the Biosphere 2 experiment was. 
the health of the biospherians when they finished their two-year experiment was much better than when they went in. Their cholesterol was low, their weight was like they were when they were teenagers. They all passed the psychological test with flying colors. To live in a small world and be conscious of its controls, of its beauty, of its fragility, of its bounty, and its limits changes who you are. There were, there were some deprivations, but overall it was so immensely um, soul satisfying to live inside a living world like that and to feel yourself a vital part of it. Bias for two by the calculations of our consultants was the most productive half acre of farmland anywhere in the world. I think Biosphere 2 was key in changing our public consciousness that we live all together on one planet. Here was an image of what a biosphere was, of an intelligent role of humans and technology and keeping it going. That got out to, I mean, I'm told a billion people may have watched the re-entry on worldwide TVs. Biosphere 2 was a unique experiment. Many more need to be done if we're going to understand how to live on this planet. We're going to have to change what is allowed and what is not allowed. For example, if something came in, we're not going to let people poison our atmosphere and waters anymore, then the entire industrial system would have to be revised. I really feel that it will continue to produce more and more revelations as people look back on what happened and hopefully are inspired by what we did and do it their own way. Whatever you've read about Biosphere 2, rethink it. Look for source materials because it's an amazing story. Its relevance to the challenges we have now just grows stronger and stronger year by year. Thank you.